to this. Look closely at your monitor. Have you seen it? It's a diet list, handwritten by a seven-year-old girl in Australia. Her mom posted the note, says she found it sitting on the little girl's bedroom floor, floor along with a lot of her toys. The spelling may be off, but the intent got her mom's attention, got ours as well. Her diet, five glasses of water, kiwi fruit, apples, and yogurt. She has on the list daily jogging, running, biking three times a day, and push-ups. Shauna Goldman is a registered dietitian from Bastyr and specializes in body image issues. Your reaction to this? I know my jaw dropped. I have young kids, a daughter mm -hmm. who is eight, and so it's surprising that someone this small would be thinking about dieting. Yeah, and I relate. I have two young girls myself. Um, I, I wish that I could say that my re reaction was shock. I, I want it to be, I want to be more surprised. Um, I've been working with eating disorders for a while now, but we're seeing younger and younger patients, and we see boys as well as girls. I think a lot of times people think this is just a problem for little girls, um, but we're seeing them younger and younger. How young? Um, five even. Five. Yeah, which is really scary, and I feel this mother's fear and frustration and anger. We do so much as parents with uh, love and good intentions, hoping we're protecting our kids, and sometimes, you know, we, f we feel or find that it's not enough. Yes, and we have to be a good role model, and we'll get into that in a moment, but this is about also striking a balance because we want to encourage our kids to be healthy, to eat healthy, to get exercise, to be active, but is it a fine line between giving them that message and then having them take it too far? It can be. I think the most important thing is to be aware of what kind of role model we are, what we talk about. Uh, if parents are dieting, talking about food, labeling it as good and bad, um, doing maybe extreme exercise, things like that, being really aware of what's going on in the home. Um, but there's a lot that you can do to protect your child, too. Family meals are shown to be highly protective. It's a great time to connect with kids, find out what's going on, how they're feeling, what's going on at school, and what's influencing them, as well as a way to model eating a variety of foods. Um, it's helpful not to use food as punishment and reward, too. That's something that we see a lot, as well as letting children listen to their own bodies and their own hunger and fullness cues. And it's so difficult, too, because in the break we were talking about many adults are dealing with diet issues. They're battling the bulge. They're trying mm -hmm. to figure out as well. So it is hard to convey a healthy message to your kids when we as grown-ups are mm -hmm. working on it as well. So what's your advice to have that conversation? You know, that conversation can be hard to have. I think the most important thing is, like we said, is the modeling of behavior. I think it's important that we're also aware how we're talking about it in schools and as a society. These messages are bombarding our kids. They're really, really young. Their brains aren't fully developed, and those messages can get really confusing. So finding an expert you can talk to, somebody in, for example, me, a registered dietitian in the eating disorder field or at Best Year Center for Natural Health. We help parents along with this, too. But there's a lot of resources that can help you start that conversation. Um, Ellen Satter has a number of books and a website. She is an expert in eating and feeding issues. Intuitive Eating is another book that has some online resources too. They have a new third edition with a children's chapter. And if you think it's more serious, National Eating Disorder Association has excellent resources online. Yeah, there is lots of places out there to get help. Uh, Shira Shana Goldman with Bastyr. Always good information. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Matt.